guys, on this episode of Mixed Bag, we got a 964 Carrera 2. Um, we're going to go over that today, tell you the inside, outside, all the things that we like about it, do some driving impressions, do some rollers, um, tell you everything about, about this car, what we like about it. Um, figure to tie it in since we did, uh, did the 964 Turbo already. Um, let's do a naturally aspirated car. Aaron, hit that music. end of the 911 again this is the naturally aspirated 3.6 liter factory 247 horsepower uh, power plant um, no intercooler clearly because it's the, the NA model but uh, it does punch a lot above its uh, weight class for what it is uh, this car has been modded clearly um, again roughly around 300 horsepower um, the nice thing about this car it's all linear power so that's one of the things I uh, enjoy about this particular model of car um, and this is the Carrera 2, not the Carrera 4. Um, so that's the two-wheel drive version. Clearly, that's what that means for the people that don't know. And then the 4 is for the 4 version. Um, so that's, that's kind of the one of the major distinctions. The, you had your option models between the C4, the C2, and then you basically have the Turbo and the Targa and the Cabrio. So those are your, your option models. Some of the stuff I love on the inside of the interior is these old dials, these old gauges. They're pretty awesome. Um, the steering wheel, the feel, all of those things that makes this car pretty cool. This particular model is running on H&R uh, deep coilovers. Uh, that's why it has that slam look. Uh, the roads here in Florida are pretty good, so this car does well on these roads. Uh, there's no rubbing on this car. Fortunately, the spring rate's really good. so perfectly. Um, this is how a 964 should be set up. Nice and tight in here. It is nice and tight in here. I see stuff on the road and like I 
just dart. It's no big deal. I mean, I've always had like really low cars, so. Now, compared to it, to the 964 Turbo you drove, your shifter, it feels.
tracks well, like, and I'm not just being, like, a Hoonigan just to be a Hoonigan, you know, like, at that speed, like, I truly trust the car, you know, like, I trust the tires, you know, it's, like, obviously got modern tires, got modern suspension, the engine's been built, like, I guess, I guess the most shocking thing about it is you think about a car from that era, even if the car didn't do that for the factory, and it's because of all the stuff we've done to it and opened it up, but even if it was doing, like, I don't know, I think that car's top speed, even on paper from the factory, was, like, 160 in 1990 at a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter. That's, like, insane to think about that. I didn't beat on the turbo because I wasn't buying that thing. <laughs> 
is more kind of like a, a GT Cruiser, especially that being bone stock. This car has more of a track setup, even though it's not tracked all the time, I'll be totally transparent, but I, I like the way that set that's set up on the street, even for me, like I, I can deal with the, you know, some people call it rough, I call it sporty, you know. It's not bad, I mean, it's not like running on bricks. Yeah, exactly, it's not like you're on like a bucking board or something where it's just beating the crap out of you. The spring rate on these coilovers are amazing. You know, it's, it's a straight, it's set up like it's ready to go on track, which is great. Thing like people always under 
they don't drive 911s and sometimes I let them drive this car like guys that are always never you know driven a rear engine car they're like wow I get it you know I get you feel the engines behind you the noise is behind you instead of in front of you or traveling through the tunnel of the car because of the exhaust everything is behind you so you're being pushed instead of dragged you know that's a big debate everybody always says you know oh yeah I, I can tell the difference we're being pushed along instead of being drug along in a car so and that's one of the major feels in a 911 I think that a lot of people don't ever really describe a whole lot because essentially you're just being you know, it's hard to describe unless you've ever been in one before and yeah. it's it, the power delivery is totally different um, not to mention obviously the engines over the tires so you hook up better um, so there's not a whole lot of wheel spin you know you're you're utilizing all the power instead of just spinning the power on the pavement like some other cars for example um, but yeah the na the na 3.6 liter it's you know even if we didn't do anything to the motor and just kept it bone stock it's still a pretty stout motor on its own so you know that alone is a nice a nice thing you know and, and the car overall like we love the narrow body of the car um what are some of the things that we don't like about the car like uh, that was a lot to love yeah i mean i guess if if you had to complain about something and like i did it on the five things i didn't like i don't yeah, like yeah, I don't I don't like that there's a sunroof in here. Like it feels less motorsport for me. And I guess like I know it's tedious to say, but you know, like I know there's weight in there because I'm sure you think about 1990 technology and probably just like, like 20 pounds. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, like a 20 pound dumbbell sitting on the roof essentially when we're driving around. It's kind of stupid. Or a 20 pound plate, however you want to look at it. Um just doesn't need to be there I guess and, and you know I know I'm being nitpicky by saying that kind of stuff and I agree with you with the AC I mean we could actually turn it up a little bit um, but it's it's not horrendous trust me like I've been in cars that are way worse like a G-body air conditioner awful um, and this is actually probably due for a cool, uh, coolant recharge it's just to be wheezing the, yeah the blowing, blowing dust on you. like this could this could use a coolant recharge I'm sure like here isn't horrendous in here. I mean, it oh, is no, cool. It's kind of like I was hogging all of it, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean, other than that, maybe if you had a bone, like, because I remember this car bone stock, and like I said, it's probably up 50 horsepower than it was that may be. from when I had it. So I think maybe that's where I don't really have a power complaint. Yeah. But when I drove it, I drove it bone stock. It did feel down on power a little bit, and I, I don't know what I'm gonna say down on. That's kind of like a bad, you know, description, but that's the only like word I can really come out with as far as like, oh, okay, what, what's the power really seem like in this thing? It feels like when you were driving it at that point, like it could just use a little bit more power and that's what we ended up doing with it. We ended up putting just a little bit more power into it and I think it's right at its sweet spot now where too much more I think would be a little bit, a little bit tough to handle. Or it's effortless yeah. drivability. You know, right now, you don't feel it's going to bite you really, you know, badly and you're going to do anything too, too terrible and be like, oh my God, I'm going to die in this thing now. You know, as opposed to like before where you felt like, man, I really got to get it up there. I mean... Before you start having fun. Yeah. Five to seven and, and you know, Porsches are notor notoriously, so you're supposed to be doing that anyways. You got to keep it in the higher band anyways, and, which is fine. Um... But the nice thing about this motor is, you know, it does have a little bit low end grunt as opposed to like an up 3.2 or something like that where it's kind of gutless down low. So that is the nice part about like this motor. Just flip around and head back. But yeah, it, it's a pretty neat thing. And, you know, we're fortunate to be able to drive some of these cars and give you guys a review on it and let you know what we think. And, you know, so far, I'm all about the 964. Yeah, all you right. like? Yeah. Both versions. I know, we're 964 heavy right now. You guys got a turbo and an NA. What's coming next? Who knows? C4, here we go. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's funny. I've never driven a C4. Um, I wonder if it's, it feels front heavy, you know, because of the... I, was, I would imagine, so I was going to say that the reason that we probably get so much steering wheel in the Porsches there isn't any weight numbing yeah it those feels up front where it feels lighter but it's got to be a, I, would, I would imagine the c4 has to take away some of that feel yeah and there's but, a lot of 
guys with a C4 that are making them C2s just yeah. because of that. They don't want to pay the C2 premium because the C2 does carry a premium just because it's a C2. So there's that. Yeah. And the car's heavier, you know, if you kept it, if you kept the C4 in it. Friday. Uh, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Uh, tell us in the comments below what you think about the 964 uh, NA. Uh, would you like this one or would you like the turbo video? Uh, that video, click here. You can check that one out. Um, but yeah, we love this one a lot. We're a linear power kind of guy. Um, so we love that a lot. And uh, again, check out our channel. Go to pcartalk.com. Uh, see all the fun things that we're doing. We write reviews. Uh, we also have a virtual membership for you guys to become part of the PCAR club. Um, see all that great stuff that everything's in there. We would greatly appreciate your support and see you guys on the next one.